watching BBN Tonight, presented by UK Federal Credit Union. Welcome back to BBN Tonight. We are 36 days away from Kentucky <laughs> versus Miami of Ohio kicking off inside Kroger Field. But if that's too long to wait, you can get a taste of football season before then because we're only eight days away from fan day. The Kentucky football team put out this save the date for the annual event, which is officially set for Saturday, August 6th. It'll be presented by Big O Tires. Not a ton of other information mm -hmm. available yet, Keith, but we do know this is always such a fun day for the fans and a great way to get ready for the season. Yeah, can't wait to see what exactly exactly as planned there. <laughs> but until then, we'll keep helping you get your football fix here on BBN tonight. And this evening, we're focused on the defense. Former Cat turned UK Sports Network analyst Jeremy German sat down with defensive coordinator Brad White to hear more about how his unit is shaping up for the season. But he started with a financial question. I got some money parked over here. I'm <laughs> looking where I can where I can park some of it. Who's going to return my investments twofold, fivefold, tenfold? you know, out of this, out of this group of, uh, this group of talents you got. I tell you, that's uh, put me on the spot on that one. We've got some guys returning that have made big plays for us. Right. And that's not to be overlooked. You know, when you're, when you're talking that linebacker position and you're really returning four starters that have played, you know, three plus years mm. in the SEC and you're talking DeAndre Square and Jordan Wright and JJ Weaver. Jaquez Jones. You talk about, you know, the talent of a Trevin Walls. Yes. You know? The kind of offseason that he's had is remarkable. He looks really good right now and sort of shaping up into what I think we've all expected from him. A guy that I'm really looking forward to stepping up this season, Carrington Valentine, hmm. you know, that – he started the entire season as a redshirt freshman in the SEC. You're going to take your lumps, and but you're going to have a bunch of film that we can correct off of. And he's he's had a great mindset through spring ball thus far through summer. I think he's got something to prove. The other corner position is going to be, uh, you know, a heck of a battle. You know, with Andrew Phillips who had a great spring and he looks. Terrific. He's moving at a really high level from a movement skill. You bring in a, a transfer, you know, in, in Keydron Smith from Ole Miss, yes. who's played in the SEC for four experience. years. You talk about that kind of experience that you add in. Again, where it may not be national headliners on defense, arguably this might be the deepest team, per se, where you don't see a drop-off you know, from one guy to the next. Is this your fourth season? No, fourth season as a coordinator. As a coordinator. Yeah. There's a lot of good play callers in this league, including yourself. What have you learned most about yourself uh, over that stretch as defensive coordinator? Whew. You know, I think I, I've learned, you know, how to to put guys in position to, to be successful, you know. And, again, there's, a, there's a, definitely a learning process there. Uh, I remember in my first year calling it, uh, you know, we'd started out, you know, 2 and 0, and then we had to play Florida. Um, you know, we played, you know, a really good first half, and then, you know, sort of lost it there when Trask came in at the end. Then we go down to Mississippi State that next year, and it just didn't feel like anything was going right. And that's my second SEC game, and you get this little, like, okay. Are you good enough yes, for this? Yes. Can, you know, can can you actually call games that are going to help this program win SEC football games? You have to get yourself, you know, through one of those rough spots to gain the confidence uh, that you're like, yeah, you know what? I do believe that I can. I feel confident going into any game that our guys can be successful and our defensive staff can create a game plan that that puts them. Uh, in position to be successful. I don't want all the ingredients, but what has been the secret to success with seeing these guys make that leap? Josh Allen, Jamin two years ago, significantly. Josh Pascal. What is happening to these guys to get them to that to that level mentally, to where they're just they're laying it out there for their for their teammates? It's not an overnight thing. It's. It's not, you don't just walk in and 
you're that guy. All of those guys had to go through a maturation process to get her. there. Yusuf, the same, like they had to gradually mature. They had to get bigger, faster, stronger with Coach Ed and Coach Hill in the weight room. They had to understand what we're asking of them defensively. And then they get to a point where they understand not just their position, but they understand how their position affects other positions around them. And there it is! There's a new career leader in sacks, and his name is Josh Allen. And with that comes a leadership. And when you get a leader, there's an ownership piece to it. All those guys at that point took ownership. You know, DeAndre Square probably doesn't get enough recognition and credit for what he's done in this defense. We almost grew up together. Him as the yeah. starting inside backer, me as the coordinator. He understands what I'm trying to get mm -hmm. done. He is an extension of me on the field. He right now is a guy that is at a different level. It's going to be – That's exciting. It is. Like, you can – I think you can hear it in my voice. Like, I'm excited to just watch him go. I don't think you get, uh, could get a bigger compliment for a guy yeah. being an extension of your coach on the field from the coach's mouth himself. That's pretty huge. I, I love some of that stuff he said there, including mm -hmm. a leader being yeah. you know, having the ownership. ownership. That's a really yeah. interesting concept, And too. even touching on the imposter syndrome a little bit. Yeah. We all get it. Now we see why he's such a great leader on the field for these guys. Uh, obviously, we're fortunate to have him here still mm -hmm. because there yep. could have been options to go. Tried and to so we're him. lucky to have him here still <laughs> uh, calling those plays on defense. All right. While we're counting down the Jays, we have to mention Kentucky. His first basketball game is just 12 days away. Yeah, but uh, we're going to talk more from the, hear more from the basketball team. Orlando, Antigua, and Brennan, Canada, right after this.